Hello and welcome to the third video in our How to Create a Basic Bookkeeping Spreadsheet. In this section, we will create a chart of accounts, which will enable us to use drop-down boxes in order to select an analysis type to allocate against each cash accounting transaction. This is the completed template we are building and central to the success of our bookkeeping spreadsheet is to ensure that we analyze data entries correctly and without error. Our chart of accounts, together with the use of drop-down box selectors, will help us achieve this objective. As usual, we are giving away a free copy of this completed spreadsheet template. To get your free copy, all you have to do is to follow us on our Facebook page and then send us a direct message quoting free bookkeeping spreadsheet. We will then send you the download link together with a 100% discount code which you can then apply against the product's cost. Alternatively, you can download the product directly from the Mr. Spreadsheet website where it is priced at just $9.99. Just follow the link shown above and in the description section below. In the previous video, we created our basic template structure for our bookkeeping spreadsheet. So let's now continue our design work. Now that we have created our basic bookkeeping spreadsheet template, it's time to automate routine entries and to enhance the analysis. So in this section, we are going to create a chart of accounts. A chart of accounts is a technical accounting term, but quite simply, it is a detailed listing of our subsections analysis of the five categories that we have already created on our basic bookkeeping spreadsheet. The five categories are sales, cost of sales, sundry income, business expenses, and other items and we're now going to create a separate table to break down the components for each category. Add a new worksheet to our bookkeeping spreadsheet and rename this Analysis. Navigate to cell C5 and type in the name of our first category, which is Sales. We're going to subdivide Sales into Sales A, Sales B, Sales C, Sales D and Sales E. Now, it is quite likely that you may have completely different sales categories. So, if appropriate, enter your own sales categories and populate cells C6 through to C10 with these. Navigate to cell C12 and enter in the category name of Cost of Sales. Generally speaking, Cost of Sales analyzes the various costs that your business incurs in relation to the sale of your products or services. These costs are typically broken down into 1. The cost of buying materials that you intend to sell. 2. Any labour costs associated with the production of products that you intend to sell. And finally, three, any other costs that are directly attributable to the manufacture or production of your products that you intend to sell. So, in cells C13 through to C15, enter in materials, cost of labour, and other direct costs. In cell C17, enter in the category other income. And, for our purposes, we will only have one of these, so enter Other Income in cell C18. Other Income is generally considered to be monies coming into the business that do not relate to the sales of your products or services. Examples would be interest received, rental income or the sale of fixed assets. Now, navigate to cell E5 and enter in the heading Business Expenses. This section could be very long. You could have countless subcategories of costs in your own business. 
So as not to overcomplicate this category, I have followed the guidelines as set out by the IRS. Please take a look at and then copy in the values as shown on screen in the range E6 through to E30. These values are pretty much the same as shown on your annual tax returns. Note that I have also allowed five extra analysis types called other expenses, spare one, spare two, spare three and spare four. You can use these if your business needs to record and identify a unique cost or expense type. So please pause the video whilst you enter in these values. OK, that's great. We now have categories and subcategory analysis for all sales related income, other income, cost of sales and general business overheads and expenses. However, not all of your receipts and not all your payments will fall into these four categories. We need another category to catch everything else. Examples would be the purchase of fixed assets such as machinery, motor vehicles, office equipment, computer systems, etc. Or you may have taken out a business loan and as this is a receipt of funds but it is not a direct business expense, you will still need to record it. Another example could be if you introduced funds into the business or if you took money out of the business as drawings. As you can imagine, the list could be very long and very complicated. So I have once again used the standard IRS analysis types. So please enter other items as the header in cell G5 and then copy in my values as shown on screen in the range G6 through to G20. OK, that's quite a lot of work, but it is absolutely necessary in order for you to correctly record your business transactions. So, coming back to our chart of accounts, we can see that this comprises five categories, and each category can have many analysis types. The term chart of accounts is simply a listing of all analysis types in these basic five categories. That means that each transaction in our bookkeeping spreadsheet must be allocated or analysed to one of these analysis types. Let's make this process simple. In the next section, we will create a drop-down box selector in our bookkeeping spreadsheet so that we can easily view and pick up the correct analysis type for each transaction. Drop-down box selectors make it easy to ensure that you only select items that have already been predefined. Take a look at cell D6 in our bookkeeping spreadsheet. Here we have typed in the word receipt. And in cell D7 we have typed in the word payment. We could create a drop-down box to automate this. Navigate back to the Analysis tab and in cell I5 type in the word receipt and in cell I6 type in the word payment. Now return to the bookkeeping spreadsheet and select cell D6. With D6 active go to the data ribbon and then pick up the data validation tool. In the dialog box that opens select list from the allow field and with your cursor in the source field, pick up the range I5 through to I6 on the Analysis tab. Then click OK to save and close. Your cursor returns back to the bookkeeping spreadsheet and you should now see a drop-down box selector to the right of cell D6. If you click this, you will be presented with two options, either receipt or payment. Please click Receipt. That was quite easy, wasn't it? So now let's create a drop-down box selector to automate the analysis type in cell E6. Firstly, however, we need to create a complete listing of our analysis types. Navigate back to the Analysis tab. 
All of our potential analysis types are shown here, but they are all in separate tables. Let's make a complete listing of these. Highlight the range C6 through to C10 and press the shortcut key of Control c to copy the data. Navigate down the page to cell C35 and press Control v and then enter to paste the data. Now highlight the range C13 through to C15 and press Control c Navigate down to cell C40 and press Control v and enter to paste the data. Repeat this process for sundry income, business expenses and other items, such that you end up with a complete listing of all of your analysis types in the range C35 through to C83. OK, we can now return to the bookkeeping spreadsheet and create a drop-down box selector that incorporates our analysis types listing. With cell E6 on the bookkeeping spreadsheet selected, navigate once again to the data ribbon and then choose the data validation tool. Select list from the allow field and then with your cursor in the source field, go back to the analysis worksheet and pick up the range C35 through to C83. Now click OK to save and close the data validation dialog box. Once again, a drop-down box selector appears to the right of cell E6, inviting you to choose any of our analysis types. How easy was that? Creating drop-down boxes is completely error-proof. You will not accidentally mistype any of your analysis types. So, we now have a complete chart of accounts and we have created drop-down boxes to expedite our data entry routines. In the next part, we will copy the drop-down boxes such that they appear on every line of data. Then, we will set up our bank balances section where we will record the running bank totals that will allow us to reconcile our balances to those shown on our bank statements. We do hope that you enjoyed watching and designing this bookkeeping spreadsheet video tutorial series with us. If you are new to the Mr Spreadsheet channel, then please do subscribe. And if you want to be notified of our future video releases, then please be sure to select the notifications option as well. If you need further help or clarification of the various formulas, functions, commands and routines that we have used, then please do use the comment sections below to leave your message. We will always reply to these. And finally, if you like this content, then please do give this video a big thumbs up. We look forward to seeing you in the next video, details of which will follow shortly.